Welcome to the Inner Athlete Podcast, where we discuss all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring. Um, I guess, you know, what are some easy tips for people, for, I guess, yeah, for people to be able to add in physical fitness more so in like when they're 40s and 50s when things, when time gets a bit tighter? Um, well, like, it really depends, but I'm really, I'm a big proponent for going to someone with the skills. Like exercise is like, well, everyone can do it, which they can. But, you know, if you're going to get your car fixed, you go to your mechanic, you just don't start thinking it yourself unless you know a bit. Like, and some, and then, and, and, and some people do. If you have a, you, you know, you've got a sore tooth, you're just going to go to the dentist. So if you need to start exercise, I would go and see someone who has those skills. And so you can start with an exercise physiologist or you can start come, you know, see a strength and conditioning coach or something like that. And it might not be that, you know, you need to have come into a, you know, come to where they work, but they can help design a program, do a screening of what you need. And then you can get started from there. I think where people sometimes go wrong is they go, well, you know, I see stuff on the internet, I can do that. So they give it a go, but then the experience might be, well, why do I do it? What's it for? It's not, you know, it doesn't really fit what I need. And it's not really individualized. It can be quite cookie cutter, what they find on the internet. Um, and so then their experience goes down. So they go, well, and then they go, well, I've tried exercise. It wasn't for me. It's like, I don't really agree with that. Like exercise is for everyone. So that would be my first point. So go and go and see an expert to start. Um, continue on with that expert, I think is a really big thing. If you can commit to something where you have to be somewhere you have to exercise you have someone who's creating your program that really gets better value for what it is okay um but joining a gym of some kind can be great now if people find that that's too difficult in terms of or whether it be financially it's difficult to join a gym or anything like that i still think seeing the expert at the start and then they can develop a home program that can then suit you and then you might see them once every month to two months just to check in and you know do some retesting or give a a, like a reprogramming so whether you're progressing or regressing that program um, and then from there you can um, have more of an individualized program Um, if that's too much um, just start walking and just go online and find a really simple um, whatever age bracket you are um, YouTube video and most of the things on there you can do you can figure out what you can and can't do I just find with those things this is what I talk to my clients about I can give you a home program right but for the people you give home programs 80% of them don't even do them that long term and probably only like 5% of them do them correctly mm. like I get home exercises from the physios that I see at work and I'm be honest like I don't do them all the time like because you're at home home's home um, and so if you really struggle, you just got to be honest with yourself. If you can do it at home, go for it. But if you know you're going to struggle, just it's just you're probably going to find you're going to have too many hurdles. So the thing I like to, uh, like analogy I like to use is really reduce the friction or trying to decrease the amount of hurdles or speed bumps in the way. So if you can really reduce those, so, you, so, you, so you're going somewhere, you're seeing an expert, you're not relying on yourself, they're less speed bumps. So you're going to be more able to do it successfully. So yeah, there's, there's a few different you know that's kind of my philosophy on it there um that's you know that's what i would i would start with yeah i think for most people they don't know where to start yeah that's 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 the biggest issue people don't know where to start because it's really overwhelming and i think we've had this chat about like the idea around choices and the more choices you have the less likely you are to commit because you're like well hang on do i do pilates or do i do yoga or do i do spin or do i do f45 or do i do do strength you know yeah and so it's really hard to go well what do i do so it gets so overwhelming that you don't choose versus if you had two options of do i do strength training or cardio like you're going to choose one of the two or you you should choose both it's almost like um the forest gump life's like a box of chocolates (laughs) exercises like a box of chocolates 100 percent. there's so much out there so many different flavors to choose from um I think the, the biggest thing is, especially if you haven't done any exercise in a long time, is establishing some some starting points. Um, with our process here, we I think with your process as well, you run through assessment. We have a whole screening process that we run through as well. We like to understand exercise history, um, injury history as well, because most people don't realize a lot of injuries um, are still lingering to some, de- some degree and also it can cause some sort of compensation issues as well, uh, which can cause some secondary issues as well um, also. Um, and if we don't catch those within the assessment process, we might be prescribing exercises that might be uh, more harmful than beneficial. Um, and from that screening process, we get them, we actually 
get them to un understand how they move, what's actually all the compensation strategies at play um, and potentially why they may be seeing some issues as well. And we kind of relate it back to the story of their injuries as well. Okay, when you had this, say for example, someone's had a, um, we had a, uh, one of the girls in a moon boot, she had a bad ankle issue uh, a couple of years ago, uh, found out that she had some sort of restriction in her hip as a result so it's almost like i think it was on her right leg and everything just kind of like collapsed upwards because the moon boot has a big thick sole uh, it's really stiff to support the foot so it's almost like she had to kind of like swing her leg around so everything was just like um compressed so all from her ribs uh, waist pelvis um, knee and she would always experience some sort of knee pain as well so almost everything's just tightened up on her um, and that helped to explain you know yes the boot was good but the problem was we we didn't train you out of the boot so you've developed this motor pattern or this movement um, compensatory um, compensation um, as a result of that it's like you know you see an elderly person with the walking frames right eventually the back becomes a candy cane because they adapt to the to the walking frame itself it's it's kind of like the same principle obviously a different example of the context um and and then establishing starting points you understand their level of knowledge as well i think that's the other part most most people that prescribe programs or do cookie cutter programs you know i see it all the time you know someone might do f45 um not bashing them or anything like that but they go into an environment and they say like yeah come do a trial and we'll see what it's all about and then they have um, they're literally a fish out of water. They just, just kind of like freeze up there. They might have jacked up lower back from the session because they just probably just haven't assessed whether or not they have appropriate um, the capacity to be able to do that or whether or not they've done that in the last 10 years. They've done a full range of motion squat. So it's kind of like then they have to kind of um, retroact or after, after the fact try and help them out with their squat. Then it's like, no, nah, it's too late. It's, it's like, no, nah, I feel sore. I'm not going to exercise. Exercise is not for me. Yeah, yeah. And it just adds to that negative experience. And yeah, I like, like 100%. And, I, and like I was a PT. I worked as a PT while I was at uni doing exercise science. Um, and I think PTs are super valuable, but I do think sometimes the scope at which, you know, they work can sometimes be extended. Um, and then that can add to someone's experience not being that great. Um, mm. Because if you've, you know, if you go see your local PT, um, and you have osteoporosis, I'm sorry, but they haven't been trained in that. And so, like, that's why seeing, like, an expert, especially as you get older, um, can be really beneficial because they can really understand, okay, what you need, why you need it, and educate you on it. And a big thing for people, um, also tips for exercise, is understand why you want to do it. Like, that's what I'm a really big proponent of is understanding why you want to do it. Um, because if you have that why and you understand it, when it's wet outside or cold or you're tired or you're stressed and, or, or you don't have the time, that why should supersede all the other reasons. So mm -hmm. if your why is um, to be there for your grandkids, um, you that passion of, okay, I want to go to the gym today because I want to be able to be with my grandkids, like that emotional response should then motivate you to keep going. Um, you know, when, when people come to me and say, oh, you know, I'm just don't, I'm like, oh, like I just don't get motivated or it's hard to motivate. So we just delve into, okay, well, why do you want to do it? Like, why are you here? And then when we really dig into that, it's like, yeah, this is exactly what, and they come out going like, yeah, I'm ready to go. Like, and it's just a quick change, a quick mindset change. So that would be the big thing as well as seeing an expert um, but understanding also why um, you want to exercise. Yeah, the expert will find the motivation of be able to help you kind of bring it out, number one. But then number two is helping to install the discipline. Yep. You know, like as you said before, if it's cold, raining. In Melbourne, it was like six degrees this morning. And I went to a boxing session and I was like, eh, it's cold, but I'll still go because I know what my why is. I know what my purpose is or why I'm going. And then it kind of supersedes, you know, me, you know, sleeping in or it's like, oh, yeah, I'll just have a coffee and just kind of sit on my butt and, watch it and just read the news or something like that. So it, it's, it's, it's quite it's quite interesting like i guess the i guess the psychological factors um in that sense of what's kind of hindering people but look at the end of the day is it's all about yeah finding that appropriate starting point i think that's probably the biggest thing that i see the most um with a lot of training programs especially the younger kids they don't really have an established starting point most adults starting point is might be four steps back from what it would actually expose a kid to just because of what they do for their job previous injury history or even like a health, their health and medical history as well that we have to take that into consideration so um it, it becomes it, it can become quite a nightmare place to find a 
find where to start. Um, and that's why it's worthwhile. If the general rule of thumb is, you know, you go to a PT if you're generally healthy. If you've got like some minor issues, like you sprain your ankle, you know, you know, whatever it may be, minor stuff, right? Yeah. You go to a PT. It's fine. It's fine. No issues. Um, if you've got something that's a bit more chronic, um, so, you know, we've worked with, uh, you know, we've got a client here, you know, who had um, sustained a stroke. She saw an EP and a physio, and then she got the green light to come back here, which is great. You know, that's how, kind of how the process should work. Um, then we had another client who also had a stroke a couple of years ago um, before she started with us, and then we were able to help her, you know, Get, get a blood sugar under control Great. I think um, lower back pain shoulder pain as well um, and she was still it was the interesting thing is, is she was still suffering lingering symptoms of her stroke that she that her muscle strength she suffered on the right side so her left arm and left leg were uh, notice, noticeably weaker um, but then in conjunction of I guess from a sports science perspective and understanding that and um, obviously doing due diligence and research were able to be able to support her um, throughout that process and she was able to return back to normal as well. So, yeah, she was great. She was great to work with. And, like, that's, some, like, you know, that's life-changing stuff as well. So if anyone, you know, who's listening or watching this who works in our industry, never underestimate the actual value you can have on someone's life. Um, the small little period of time you can work with them can actually have a really profound effect so like that's amazing like just one quick little story um i work because I, I usually work with older demographics but i worked with this young male um who uh had who was on the spectrum um and so he started when he was 15 with me um and i would see him once twice a week um over a two-year period um he slowly you know had low had poor motor control had poor muscle tone um over time as he got older and was doing you know we primarily focused on strength training at Kiza. we were doing that um he got to 18 he's like i'm out of here um this is for old people so i totally i totally yeah. respected that um and but his mum still trained with us um and he and then his mum came in six months later and said you know he's doing some mma he's at the gym with his mates doing like bicep curls and things like that and it just it just hit me like me seeing him you know, it's great to be able to see him make physical changes and things like that. But that period of time where he was seeing myself actually, and this is what his mum and I were saying, actually got him to understand the value of exercise. And so that he actually on his own went out and did MMA and went to the gym. Whereas, and you can't confirm whether if he didn't see me or done any exercise, he wouldn't have done that. But the two of us both believe that if he hadn't been doing structured exercise and been in that environment, he wouldn't have had the confidence or ability when he's 18, 19 to go out and actually do it himself and mm. so that's kind of what the messaging i think what you do here is great is that kids come into the gym you've got you you've got like your great team here with kids you know whether they can jump an extra 25 percent or whatnot yeah in the short term that's valuable and you know i can see why parents would want that to see, see results but don't underestimate actually the value of just being in an environment like this where they can get comfortable and be able to look at a barbell and go okay cool i know what that does like I have that many clients who would not know what a barbell is and that's fine. Like I remember when I started, I went to the gym at like 18, 19. I'm like, what do I do with this thing? Like what am, like, what am I meant to do? Like how does this all work? Whereas if you're 14, 15 coming into a place like this where you can be trained by experts, um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like sell the service. I'm just, I'm just sort of talking about it's just why well, yeah. well, well, I'm selling it. But like it's just like don't underestimate the long-term benefit that has on someone's life um, for as a parent but as a – as an exercise scientist or, or whatever it may be that you're really setting them up for success. Um, and, you know, I think that's something that um, I really value. Um, I kind of feel that that's something that you value as well, being, you know, knowing you for the last eight, eight to nine months. Um, and I think the stuff that you're doing is great um, in terms of trying to change some attitudes and, you know, not to get too philosophical with it all, but, you know, you can really shape generations of people. Like if you can help, you know, a hundred kids, then if they have kids, they're going to be exposed to exercise. Like it, like it can actually have a really, really profound effect. Um, so I think the more that places like this and more um, exposure for young children and, and adolescents to be in exercise and strength training in particular, strength training can always have that stigma of, oh, I shouldn't do it because it's, it's going to stop my growth. Well, we know that a lot of that is bullshit. Like mm -hmm. you actually can do it as long as it's, you know, the load is appropriate. You know, you're not going to be getting some six-year-old, six, you know, six-year-old or ten-year-old kid who's 40 kilos to be squatting 100 kilos like no way like but doing but doing some functional exercises things like that they can be exposed to that um and that sets them up for success 
big time in the future. So um, I know I kind of just rambled on them, but I just wanted to make sure that that message was coming across from from uh, from today's chat because that's something I'm really passionate about. Yeah, um, I, I mentioned this before when I was at Brighton Grammar. I was doing a bit of work there, and they had the um, the head the hop the head S and C that the message was pretty simple. It was like we we train for performance and we train for life. The whole performance thing, obviously, you know, weekend sport with the kids, um, training them, training for that, and then obviously recovery as well. Then the other part is is be able to give them the skills to actually be able to do that post post school. Um, and the idea is, like I said before, I think in the first five minutes, it's like we're just caretakers. That's all we are at the end of the day. They come see us, you know, they pay X amount of dollars, they come see us, um, you know, X amount of times a week for X amount of months or years. And at the end of the day, we are literally just caretakers. We're just caretaking them for someone else to be able to look after them. And that's why I see my job. Um, if people leave and say like, oh, my son wants to go to the gym with his mates, I'm like, all right, great, cool. He knows what he's doing. He's not going to cook himself 100%. under the barbell. He's going to save himself. If, if anything, he's going to be able to educate his friends. Yep. We had a story actually of that. We had a um, um, young girl. Um, she had a history of lower back issues. She had a hip shift as well, and that actually cleaned up. We gave her some drills to do that as well. Um, that was pretty simple. Um, found out that um, from the training she had been done, been doing here, I knew someone that was running a school program where she was she was attending, right? And found out from uh, I guess I guess from the the um, the coach at the time, she was actually instructing one of her friends. <laughs> on how to do these exercises. See, how good's that? Yeah. So it's kind of like, what's the saying? It's like, you know, the gust of a butterfly from South America creates a tidal wave in uh, Africa or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So you create like this domino effect of, you know, you influence one, you you influence one and, and they influence one or you influence three, they influence three, they influence three. Yeah. And it just becomes like this, um, this huge like domino effect um, of being able to assist others whilst... You've assisted them. Now they can assist someone else. They assist someone else. And it just becomes like this huge thing that starts to spread out like wildfire. Um, and that's just kind of like the general consensus of how we see things. And then that's going to enable them to set things up. And when you teach something, this is what a lot of people don't realize when it comes to learning. So we learn through various ways. Number one is obviously hearing, seeing, um, kinesthetic, obviously doing. Um, the other one is actually teaching. When we teach, we actually, that's when we learn the most and that's what people don't realize because when we teach, we have to learn the content then we have to apply the content to the individual and that encompasses all of those factors. Yep. Um, and then when we see her learning, it's reinforcing what we've taught her even more. So then she learns it and hopefully down the track that her friend wants to do more gym and eventually she teaches someone else to do that and it reinforces that and it just becomes and it becomes more entrenched um, in, in that motor learning and development and but also from the behavioral perspective that you know exercise is actually good. Yeah, and how impactful is that? Someone, someone coming here, like hearing a story like that where someone was here and then they were using the skills that you and your team have taught them to help someone else. Like that's massive. Like that is huge. And like if there can be more of that and, you know, I look on my, my end, like I have people who come in who are 70, right, and they can be grandmas. But they start exercising, they start seeing the benefit and you see like a behavioral change where they value what they're doing and then they can really impact their own grandchildren. Of if like if like if their grandchildren are seeing that, hey, grandma's off to the gym today, and they're like five, six, they'll be like, oh wow, how cool is that? Like grandma's doing that, or like if they're ten, eleven, twelve, oh yeah, I'm interested in doing that. What do you do, grandma? Like those those impacts. Like you're starting from like kids seeing other kids do it, but if I can, you know, kids learn from their parents, like. I, I can imagine you seeing your mum as the story before of her exercising her whole life. I imagine that influenced your path and your your exercise history. Yeah. Yeah. And so same with me. Like I saw my dad, he was always exercising, you know, mum, mum used to play tennis. Like that really, you know, you mirror what you see. Um, you know, there's studies out there that show that, you know, for parents who, you know, smoke, the kids are more likely to smoke. And the kids, are, if parents are more sedentary or like watch more TV, TV viewing for kids is meant to. So if parents are exercising more, kids are more likely to exercise as well. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, you know Aaron Donald? Yep, the NFL player. He uh, plays for LA Rams. Yep. Uh, Super Bowl champ, defensive player of the year, I think at least once, maybe twice. He's a freak. Yeah, genetic freak. Anyways. Big time. 
So he got into the gym. He no, when he was growing up, and they I can't remember where he grew up. Anyways, his dad was a like a beast. So he had yeah. like a basement gym. Yeah. And I think he's I think the story goes, Aaron would and his brother would have to sit and watch his dad work out like early in the morning or something like that. And it got to the point where they actually wanted to join in with that. And obviously Aaron Donald, one of the strongest players in the league, genetic freak, he's always on the field. And obviously he's, you know, whatever his father emulated and shown him of what he could do. He wanted to be a part of that as well. So then it's kind of, it's kind of like that's manifested into Aaron from his father 100 percent. then there's the um i know we're going off topic now <laughs> but That's anyways right. uh the biology belief so dr bruce lipton mm-hmm. um now he says or his research set um mentions that he can give you the outcome of what your child's going to be like between the ages or what your child is exposed to between the ages of one and seven Right, and that apparently that's where a lot of the delta wave brain activity, and that's got, and that's, um, I think delta wave is associated with, um, I think not with learning. Um, so we, so when between between the ages of one and seven, we tend to absorb from our environment and what you're exposed to the most, which is usually your parents at that age mm-hmm. or even your peers at school. That's what you take on, and that kind of forms the general nucleus or behavior for that child moving forward which i thought was very interesting in that sense and there's been like uh, i guess you know anecdotal books about that like rich dad poor dad you know if you got a poor dad you're more likely to be poor yourself on average on average um but then if you got a rich dad then you're more likely to be rich yourself as well so it kind of like manifests um up or down through the um the family tree yeah yeah no i i 100 agree and um that um you know the example of aaron donald obviously is uh is is like sort of to the max of what i was talking about about parents you know that they're, they're doing the gym at 3 a.m you know probably squatting his dad's probably squatting like 250 300 kilos i've seen his family they're absolute beast the whole mm-hmm. lot of them even his brothers but yeah you know that just forms that behavior and so um yeah if kids are exposed to that and but that's where service like this can be great because it might be, you know, parents are active in terms of like, you know, taking the kids to sport and walking, you know, the kid, you know, parents don't have to be in the gym showing them what to do. No. But if kids can know that, you know, exercise is really good, it's valued. So getting out there and playing sport or getting out there and going for a walk after, you know, after school before going onto the computer or watching TV thing or like riding my bike, things like that, like real simple things like that, kids will understand it. Um, and then if you're looking to get them involved in the gym so they can get comfortable, that's when you look for services such as such as yourself. Parents have got a hard enough job. I said I'm not a parent, so I don't I, I don't know how hard it is. But that, I imagine the the job's that hard. You don't have to worry about how do I get this kid comfortable in a gym. But having someone who can show them how to do that, such as here, is where that can then happen. So kids see the value from doing exercise at home, just general stuff, but they can learn how to be in this environment and increase that, which I'm actually going to use going forward, um, that exercise IQ, um, that exercise intelligence. I think that's a really good term to actually use to, um, you know, upskill so that people know what they can and should be doing. Cool. All right, we'll wrap it up there for today. Thanks for coming down, Tom. All good, mate. All right. Tom's going to go have a lift now. Yeah. Yep, straight after this. Yeah, nice. Um, if you like this episode, please like, subscribe, share, uh, comment. You know, it really does help us. Our message, our message is starting to grow now. You know, we've got people listening. You know, talk to people. Love it. Whatnot, Why not? Why not? It's really good to hear. It's great. It, the young kids listen to it. They're like, don't make it longer than 20 minutes or we'll break this up into two parts. <laughs> so we'll take the feedback on board. Um, until next time, uh, we'll see you on the next one. You have just listened to the Inner Athlete Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the release of weekly episodes. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get great tips on all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring.